Guys, as your chill canine, and today we are going to be telling you how we start our German Shepherd puppies in protection. So, what I have with me here, obviously German Shepherd puppy on our table, back tied. You can see there's a she's wearing a flat collar, and you know she has a, a little back tie. At home, obviously, you're not going to have this, but you can back tie the puppy to anything from a post to your banister, um, even. And my suggestion is in the beginning. Back tie the puppy a couple of times and just feed the puppy some kibble get the puppy comfortable being back tied and leave the puppy there for a few minutes and then once the puppy is comfortable then you can start doing um, grip development. So at this stage we're not going to put too much pressure on the puppy we're just going to be doing um, grip development which is a, a, a prey drive based exercise and I need to get the puppy interested in biting this rag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the rag back and forth get the puppy excited to bite it. All right, and once I see sufficient arousal towards the rag, I'm gonna make some misses on the rag and then I'm gonna give the puppy the grip. I'm gonna be doing a number of things while I do this. It's not such a simple behavior. There's a lot of things that are actually gonna be going on. So I'm gonna to try to talk you guys through it um, as I do it. So in the beginning, I'm just gonna move the rag on the floor, get her excited for it. So a couple things there. You notice that I don't start super close to the puppy. This this puppy doesn't really know me, number one. So me starting really close to her can cause a little bit of insecurity, right? Um, number two, I don't. If the puppy's very socially oriented, I don't want her to become too interested in me and not the rag. So I step back and I have the rag do the vast majority of the movement, so that the dog becomes fixated on the rag, right? And then you saw at the beginning. There was a, a little bit of fixation, not too much, so I moved it a bunch and then I even threw it up on the table and whipped it away until I saw her really trying to get it and then I gave her the grip. Now she had a little bit of a half grip which is common especially if you're using the leather and that's why I like to use the leather because it's a little bit slippery in the dog's mouth and they really have to clamp down on it versus if you use a piece of burlap they can just be holding on with their front canine so look at that you see like she's kind of got just a half a grip try not on the not too close there you go perfect so you saw there i went in i set the burlap up a little bit and she was able to get a little tired here and she was able to fill her mouth so here again you can see it's not a full grip right it's a it's a half grip so i'm going to give her the chance good girl to fill her mouth properly. And this is this is about where I want it. You know, if she wants to push a little bit farther back, it's not bad for our first session. This is her first session doing bite work. She's a little bit hectic too. You'll notice that she kind of growls a little bit when I get close. Could be a little bit of insecurity and a little bit of conflict there. So I'm gonna work that a little bit. You'll notice I always keep the rag alive. I'm not hauling on it because she's a little baby. I'm just making little tension on it, keeping it a little bit alive in her mouth. Okay, when I get close, I set it. Oh, good girl. And sometimes I'll just cradle her. You can see, she doesn't really want me to cradle her. Good girl. Good. And I just put my hand up under her chin, and I'm going to try to calm her down a little bit. Good girl. Good. I'm going to take the rag again. I'm going to work her a bit back and forth. Not Nothing crazy, just easy movement. Set. Good. And she punched in a little bit. And that's what I want. When I flex the rag, I want the dog to punch into the rag and fill her mouth. You see a lot of people doing this stuff online and they're just doing crazy stuff, you know? And it's like, the dog really isn't learning anything. Now she has good prey drive. She doesn't have extreme prey drive. See, look, 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 it's slipping, right? So she has delicate puppy teeth. I'm not gonna yank it out of her mouth, but at the same time, I'm just gonna make, ah, there it is. Just a little bit of tension and it popped right up. Now I'm gonna get her going again. Look, 
again, we have to be careful here. Good. Oh, good job. How you do this, what you specifically do might depend on what your goal is. Like if your goal is to do IGP bite work for sport, or your goal is to do, you know, suit work for a suit sport, or if your goal is to do personal protection, it might change a little bit of your approach. For us with this dog, we're gonna start her as if she's a personal protection dog, right? So I want the arousal towards the rag, and then I want that punch in when her mouth, when, when the grip isn't full, I want her to punch in. Okay, so again, watch that tension. You have to be very careful. Don't rip any teeth out of your dog's head. And if your dog is teething, do not do this. So again, I come in, set, good girl. She fixes her grip. I'm gonna try and calm her down here a little bit. Good girl. Praise her, make a little bit of tension just to keep her grip firm on the rag. Good. I'm gonna take the rag, I'm gonna let it slide through my hand, step back, and we're gonna do our tugging at a bit of a distance. If I get real close, like she's a pretty confident puppy. Good. If I get real close, I can do it with her, right? I can do it, but doesn't mean I should. Look, the grip slipped a little bit. A lot of people do this crazy stuff, right? And it's like, this isn't gonna help the dog. We wanna promote a full grip. So, so I'm gonna work a lot of the grips at a distance or at least a half distance just to build that full, par, confident grip. And the important thing too, is I'll never put it in her range. Oh. I'll never put it in her range unless I'm sure that she's really trying hard. If she's kind of half motivated, then I won't, I will just keep that rag moving and I'll get her really excited for it. And I might not even give her a bite, right? So don't be afraid to not give your dog a bite if your dog is not showing sufficient motivation to go after the rag, right? I'm a big believer in working your dog. Oh. Girl, I'm a big believer in working your dog in whatever drive primarily motivates them. So obviously this dog's primary drive is prey, but there are some dogs whose primary drive is defense. And if you have a dog whose primary drive is defense, then you need to be working the dog in that manner, but never yourself. And if you don't know what you're doing, don't mess with defense. But that's another topic altogether. But for a puppy that has sufficient prey drive, this is an excellent way to start teaching the dog how to bite properly. For those of you that will say, oh, well, I don't want my dog interested in the rag. I want my dog interested in the man. That's because you don't really understand how the process works. You need to teach your dog how to bite properly before you actually put your dog in the place where the dog will be biting somebody or even somebody wearing equipment. And I see again, a lot of people skipping these critical steps and they have a dog that does not bite properly and they're putting that dog on bite suits and sleeves and you see just terrible gripping behavior because the dog was never given the correct foundation. Shh. She's getting a little tired here, so normally I would stop. I'm gonna go for one more though. Shh. a little bit of a, dif a different presentation there, right? You saw me actually present it. Oh, good girl. And give the dog a bite directly from my hand as opposed to throwing it. And that's because I know she could handle it. If she was showing a little more insecurity with me coming up on her, then I wouldn't have done that. So I'm still working this dog more in the middle distance and in the far distance. I'm not doing too much work close. If I come in close, it's to set and get that punch in a little bit. There, she did a very little one. Now I'm gonna cradle her. So when I come close, bad things don't happen. It's really important. A lot of people come close and they get crazy with the dog. I want the dog to associate me coming close with being calm, full, and hard on the grip. Not, oh my God, we're gonna get into a big fight. That can come later. So what I'm gonna do is whenever I come in, I'm gonna help the dog a little bit. I'm not gonna, shh. So that time it came out of her mouth. 
but I'm gonna set the set the rag to get the dog to bite in nice and full. And whenever I do, the big mistake a lot of people make is they put this rag in the dog's mouth. I want the dog moving her feet and going after it. Oh, good girl. Obviously, if the dog's on the back tie, she can't come to it. But I'm going to move it so that she has to move her feet Ooh. to go after the rag. All right? So now she's biting it. When I walk in again, it's so important. Calm, relax, or I'm going to set. Oh! She's going to bite nice. I'm going to move out. Okay? So this is how I like to start this puppy. I'll, I, um, this is how I will start these puppies on, on the bite work. From here, I will move to other things, but in the beginning, I'm gonna just spend a couple of sessions getting the dog comfortable, showing the correct transition of behavior from prey arousal to, you know, the pursuit of the object to biting the object, and I'm gonna focus on how the dog bites the object. For those of you that have a problem, as you can see, like every single time I've gotten it, out of this dog's mouth, it slipped out of her mouth because it's leather. If you're not using leather, if you are using burlap, right, that is easier for the dog to hold on to. Doesn't necessarily mean it's better to use, but it is easier for the dog to hold on to. For that, what I do is I like to do little lift offs. So I'll lift, and you saw there I didn't actually hold it until she let go because I'm not trying to make her out. When I do a lift off, I'm actually promoting that the dog hold on. If you, if you have a motivated dog and you do a lift off, a lot of the time you'll see that the dog actually holds on even more, which is good. So you can see now she's so tired, right? She doesn't even want to punch in, she just wants to hold on. So I'm gonna keep her out a little bit at the full distance. And then I'm gonna step in. Oh, good girl. Very kind of a half-ass regrip, but that's okay. All right? And then we'll do a lift off. And you can see, right? Now, we'll stop now. Okay guys, so a couple things with this puppy. Um, and for those of you who are wondering, she is from our breeding. Her prey drive, she has a very good prey drive. She doesn't have an extreme prey drive. There's different levels. There's dogs with lower, there's dogs obviously with mediocre, there's dogs with good, and then there's dogs with extreme. I would rate her as good prey drive, not extreme. Okay, so as you can see, she had fairly good motivation. She was fairly committed to going after the rag. Um, and especially it's a leather rag, so it's much more harder for the dog to grip. So she was biting nice and hard for the vast majority of the um, exercise. Like I said, this dog needs more work in the middle distance, so not super close. And then from the middle distance, when she's showing me the correct behavior, I'm gonna move in to the close distance and I'm gonna work a little bit more close work. When she's really comfortable with me very close to her, then we're gonna move on to other things. But in the beginning, I'm gonna work this dog on the back tie, get her grips nice, firm, hard, and calm. I'm gonna get the dog re-gripping into the rag, right? I don't want her just staying like this. If she has a half grip, I want her to re-grip and fill her mouth, okay? So if I'm, if I'm doing suit work with the dog, I want a dog who's gonna naturally push in, push in, push in, and firm and hard the whole time. If I'm doing IGP work, I want the dog firm and hard and pulling. But again, this is a topic for another day. This is just how I get the dog started in, in the, the prey circle. I want the dog to activate the prey. I want the dog to chase the prey. I want the dog to grab the prey and hold the prey. And I want the dog to possess the prey. And I think that concludes our first part one of this series on how to train a German Shepherd to do protection work.